Today, we will be looking at the audio loopback feature on the Audient ID4 audio interface, when you'd use it, and how it works. Audio loopback enables you to record your computer audio alongside your microphones in your audio software. Imagine plugging a cable from one of the outputs and bringing it straight back into the input so you can record the audio from your computer. This is exactly what audio loopback is doing, but it all happens internally, without the need for cables, and while still allowing you to use your mic input for recording. Using audio loopback, you can record your computer's audio on separate channels to your microphone, or alternatively, you can combine your computer audio with your mic audio into a single channel to send to a stream or software that only accepts one audio input at a time. So how does it work on ID4? When you select your inputs in your audio software, you will actually notice that there are four inputs listed instead of the two you would expect for your mic and instrument input. Channels three and four are actually your loopback inputs, virtual inputs that we use to record your computer audio. You're able to control exactly what is sent to the loopback inputs using the dedicated audio loopback mixer. To access the loopback mixer, make sure that the ID app is running and then press the ID logo in the menu bar on a Mac or right click on the ID icon in the system tray on Windows, find the show loopback mixer menu item and click it. So here is the audio loopback mixer. Essentially, when you turn up any of the channels, it will be sent through to the loopback inputs, and you'll be able to access the audio from software. First, you have the input channels, which control the level of your microphone or instrument input. These are the physical inputs on your audio interface. Next, you have your main outputs. This is the default output of your computer. Any audio coming through the computer will appear here. Then, you have loopback 1 and 2. These are virtual outputs that you can send audio to. To send audio to this output, you either need to do it in the specific application by selecting ID4's outputs 3 and 4, or loopback 1 and 2 as the outputs, or alternatively, you need to change your computer's default audio output to the ID4 loopback output so that everything on your computer is sent to these. I'll show you how to do this in a second. So let's look at how you can use the audio loopback mixer in a few different examples. Firstly, let's look at how you can use it to record some computer audio alongside your microphone on separate channels in some audio software. This would work whether trying to record game or video audio for commentary, or recording conversations for remote interviews. Let's go into the audio software and get that set up. In this example, we're going to be using Cubase LE, which comes free with ID4 when you register it. However, other audio softwares will have a similar setup process. Create a mono track for your microphone, making sure to set the input to input 1, and then create a stereo channel for your computer audio, setting the input to input three and four. This channel will now pick up anything on the loopback inputs and anything that is turned up in the loopback mixer. As you can see in the loopback mixer, we have audio visible in the mic input and the main outputs. In this example, we want to make sure that the mic and computer audio are recorded separately. So we ensure that the mic channels are turned down and that the computer audio channel is turned up. You can hold Alt or Option and click on a fader to easily bring it up to zero. Now you can see that we have signal in the computer audio channel in Cubase, and we can go ahead and record it alongside our microphone. In this example, however, you will need to ensure that you aren't listening back to your audio in your audio software, as currently the output of Cubase is being sent to your main computer outputs, which is being looped back into Cubase, and therefore creating a feedback loop. So your options here are to just ensure that you aren't monitoring any channels in the door and make sure you're using the direct monitoring on ID4 to listen to your mic, or by sending audio to the loopback outputs or even setting your computer's default output to the loopback channels, you can have your door send audio to your regular outputs and listen as normal. Some applications will let you change the audio output. If you have this option, then change the output to ID4 output three and four. This might be displayed as ID4 loopback one and two, depending on the software. Now any audio from that application will come into loopback 1 and 2 channels in the loopback mixer, so just ensure that this is turned up and computer 1 and 2 is turned down, and you're ready to go. If you can't change the audio output of an application individually, then you can just change the default output of your whole computer to the loopback output. On a Mac, you need to open audio MIDI setup, so go to Finder and click Applications, go to Utilities, and then Audio MIDI Setup. Select ID4 from the list of devices and select Configure Speakers, and then set your left and right output to Loopback 1 and Loopback 2. If you're on Windows, go to Settings, then System, 
then go to the sound tab and change your output settings to loopback 1 and 2. So now any audio from your computer will be sent to the loopback 1 and 2 channels in the audio loopback mixer. So again, you can ensure that the loopback 1 and 2 channel is turned up and record it into your door without having to worry about any feedback if you want to monitor your audio. The second example for using loopback is combining your mic and computer audio into a single stereo feed, perfect for sending out to a stream or recording audio on software that only allows one audio input. This is done simply by turning up the mic fader and computer or loopback channel fader and balancing them until you are happy with the way they sound. You will then be able to access the combined audio by selecting ID4 inputs 3 and 4 in your audio or streaming software. It's worth noting that not all software will allow you to select different inputs, so please check with your software before you try this. So hopefully this has given you an idea of what is possible with the audio loopback feature on ID4, and that you will enjoy using it for whatever you're working on. If you have any questions about how audio loopback works or ID4 in general, then please leave a comment or get in touch with our support team. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more audience related video content. <laughs>